guys so here we are again with a, a new youtube video and um, this time i'm gonna unveil uh, the the new items i uh, i discovered at the houghton uh, military show in uh, the netherlands um, that, that was uh, two days ago um, so it's tuesday today it was on sunday um, i must say it was uh, quite surprisingly i found a lot of nice items at, at the show um, and sometimes you can really get lucky there uh, as as all, all shows if you do your best and of course you um you look well um so let's see what we have here to start with so uh, what we have here is a nice um m43 cap um uh, as you can see the color is a uh, is, is um, mustard brown it's actually a cap for uh, the organization tot which was a, a building a kind of a building um organization um that would uh, be in charge of building the atlantic wall now the cap is actually uh, has the same construction as a, an army or a Luftwaffe uh, uh, M43 cap, but of course the color is different, and and also the the the, the insignia on the front has also a brown backing, so it's typical uh, that this was also used for the organization tot. Nice to see as well is that it's original applied, machine applied, um, with the same type of thread as the the construction of the cap, and also very important it is not uh, uh, stitched through the lining if you see a, a badge like this um, stitched through the lining you can already be sure it has been post-war uh, applied because of course many of these insignias were torn off uh, during um, imprisonment uh, after after the war um, the cap is also nicely marked here 1943 and has an uh, rbn manufacturing code maybe something interesting so these codes actually replaced maker markings because um, uh, before 1943 Germans would mark their equipment with, um, with, with just a maker mark uh, or, or factory like I don't know the Sander factory in, in Munich um, and what did they do the Americans when they um, had prisoners they tried to look up these factories and then they, they had a target to bomb uh, to bomb them with, uh, with airplanes. So from 1943 on, uh, the Germans marked uh, their equipment with uh, RBN numbers, um, and this this referred to a, a factory. But of course, like this, it was difficult to know where the factory was located. Um, what do we have? I'll put it on the table here. Here's a nice uh, infantry visor cap. So white piping for for infantry. Uh, has a, the original aluminum insignia on the front. Uh, this one has been nicely squeezed uh, on the front. Still has the, a nice saddle shape. It's something we, we really like to see uh, with the visor caps. Uh, the inside shows normal wear. The, the sweatband is a bit torn on the on front here. Um, has a maker mark here and a size mark here. Um, by the construction, I would say it's it's a rather uh, late war uh, manufactured cap. You can also see it by the quality of the leather. This isn't actually real leather. It's it's artificial leather. Almost feels like feels like cardboard. Um, that's why it it it, uh, it has the it it rips a bit like that, as you can see. Um, so I would say uh, m mostly like mostly like made in 1943 or later, but just an honest uh, infantry officer cap uh, for the army. Um, let me see other interesting things. So here's a nice one. This is a late war canteen. Now, um, what's special about this one is that the cover is actually made from a, um, a cloth that looks a bit like gabardine. So normally this would be made in wool, but for the advanced collector, this is a, a canteen that everybody's looking for. It's with a special uh, special cover in gabardine. Um, it's a uh, it has a maker mark here, ESB mm, 1944. That's also correct, of course, because it's a late war manufactured item. Um, let's open it up and see if we can find anything more. Just always be very careful with these straps because they intend to break. And then, of course, um, the value of your canteen is uh, only, it's only half what it's worth. Um, so, Interesting here is that you can see the strap, you see all these little dots on the strap. It's made of pigskin leather, and pigskin leather is something we often see on late war equipment. So, um, again, a, a nice match. You can also open this up. If you open these snap buttons up, make sure you, you put your uh, nail on the inside, so you don't, you don't turn the, uh, you don't uh, turn uh, the, whole, uh, the whole snap button off. So, like this. It opens and now we can look here and you will find a maker mark here MN 
also the, the date didn't come true, but it will be 1944 as well. Um, sometimes, if you look closely, there's a maker mark on the strap as well. Um, they're mostly marked here, but again, this, this particular example has been worn, so the stampings might have been faded on the strap as well. But just a nice, uh, honest, um, late war canteen with a steel cup. Um, it's not a matching maker mark, uh, but it, it's still a rare uh, example in this uh, particular um, uh, cloth. So here's something I've never seen before. Um, so this is a, a, a Zeltbaan or a, a quarter shelter. Uh, it's the, open it up, you can see how big it is. So it's not, normally we always see these in, uh, in camouflage colors, but this one is gray. Um, it's mint, never issued. And if you come a bit closer here, um, we can see a very interesting. Uh, I will show you first maybe the maker mark. Where is it? It's on the other side. There it is. Uh, you can see the maker mark here. Warer uh, Plantenzeile from Berlin, dated 1940. But on the other side, it has an RZM label saying it's an SA Zeltbahn. So um, something I've never seen before. It's a, It has an RZM maker mark here as well. It has the whole tag still intact. So it's actually a, maker, a Zeltbahn for uh, SA troops. Um, a, a quite a unique piece. And the first time I've encountered one like these in this condition as well. Yeah. Beautiful example. So this will go on the floor. And here another nice piece of equipment. So this is a, a from if you look uh, uh, from a distance, looks like a normal uh, um, M31 uh, gas mask canister. But if you look a bit closer, you can see actually the color is blue. And you can see that here because this is blue and the underneath, there's still the original layer of, of green. So a blue, a blue canister always indicates, of course, it's a Luftwaffe canister. And Luftwaffe is, of course, a little bit more uh, rare to find than the normal green ones. Um, uh, it has here a, a two-digit number from the soldier who probably wore it. Um, it's nicely intact, a little bit of uh, wear. Has the original straps still intact, always important. And let's open it up. And we can see here as well, uh, it's named to um, uh, K-A-N, which means Kanonier or uh, um, Gunman um, uh, Heim Fritz. And Kanonier would be somebody who would... Um, probably uh, working at the anti-aircraft unit, so a Luftwaffe unit uh, shooting down planes. On the other side, you will see the maker mark and the date from the canister 1940. If you open this up, uh, here is a, a case for the spare glasses. Uh, three pieces inside, so yeah. Um, one is, would be enough, but it's always nice if you find these untouched masks, there's still plenty of uh, them inside. Uh, and then let's pull out the mask. So the mask is um, already a nice uh, rubber variant, so uh, I like to see these more than the, the cloth versions. And interesting of, well, that you can see it's really untouched, number 18, number 18, so this has always been together from the same soldier. Um, the mask, if you open this up, it's still like this, so I'll leave it, but there will be plenty of markings inside. And then, very important, on the bottom of the gas mask, uh, we'll see that uh, it still has the original cleaning cloth inside as well. Um, normally these are don't have any markings. It's difficult, a typical tissue you can easily recognize. Um, the only thing missing is a, is a spring, so there would be a spring inside. Um, let me let me show you one. Uh, I have it hidden somewhere. I think it was here. Luckily, I have a few spare ones, so this would be this would be an original spring. I found a, as you can see, a bunch of them in Germany a while back, uh, and they're all clipped together. So this would be the spring, and this would go inside of the mask, the, the cleaning cloth would go on the bottom and this would be on top and it would hold the cleaning cloth on the bottom. So I will probably add this to the gas mask uh, because it, that, like then it's a, a fully complete gas mask. So that will be nice, a nice set. 
Um, so let's make a bit of a room on the table here. So what, is it, what else did we find at the show from interesting material? Uh, a lot of equipment, of course, but this will be very nice. So here we have a nice original uh, Luftwaffe or Air Force uh, Fliegerblüse. So this would be the normal standard um, jacket for, uh, for any Luftwaffe personnel. Um, you will already notice the color tabs, the, the piping and the piping of the shoulder boards is yellow. It means it's a, for a flying unit, so that would either be for a pilot or a paratrooper. But you can already see here on the sleeve, the original applied um, flying uh, uh, wings are here. So this would be for a, 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 a pilot or um, somebody who would surf in an airplane. The nice thing about this jacket is that it's been totally unmasked with. It came from a German seller at, at the show. Um, it has original boards. Uh, it still has the, this, this very nice uh, piping attached. And of course, the original eagle is still applied. Same as, as I said before. You can turn it around here and by looking at the stitching, just compare the, 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 the stitches with the stitches of the jacket and you will already see its original applied. There are also no traces of other eagles ever been there, so that makes it a nice jacket. On the other side, you will mostly find um, markings. Um, I can still see them, but they're marked in yellow ink and of course yellow ink is not really the best thing. Uh, for this jacket, so it's it's a bit worn off here. Um, it's not very sharp anymore, but because you can already tell that the jacket, of course, you see it as well, has been worn. Eh? So it's not a mint jacket, but it's a nice worn jacket, original ply and senior, and and no no major damages. Just a very honest uh, honest figure blues as I like it. Um, so this is a beautiful piece. Put it in the bag. So here we have a, a M35 a German helmet. So you can see M35 by the vent holes, of course, they are coming out a little bit. You can see that in our previous videos. Um, it is a very early example, still has a bright a green color in the collector's terms, you call it apple green color. Uh, the, the decal is still very sharp on this side, not a lot of damages uh, on the other side, same. The, the tricolor shield is still present and it, it's, it's still, yeah, I think 95% present, still shows nice, uh, Crisp, crisp, nice and crisp details. The helmet shows uh, a little bit of combat wear. Still has an original liner inside. Um, and interesting to see with these early helmets is it's a single band aluminum liner. So um, after it, it's, you can see if you pull it a bit up, you can see the date here, dated 1937. And from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1938, they would reinforce these uh, bands because it because the aluminum was so thin it would sometimes torn and you will uh, you will see some of these helmets if they were worn in combat that the the, the ring the, so this band here has been split into and two and that's why a little bit later they actually made um, liners uh, with reinforcements uh, so it wouldn't uh, tear and then in 1940 they switched to steel uh, bands so the helmet is complete and of course very nice um, you can see the maker mark here uh, um, se and a size 68 which would be of the uh, one of the bigger sizes available uh, on the market uh, still has an original chin strap attached uh, dated 1940 so not a real match from the chin strap uh, but it's, it's a nice uh, it's a nice honest helmet with an original chin strap um, maybe we, we should find a uh, an earlier replacement to put it on the helmet like a 38 or 37 date strap to make it really um, uh, complete again so we'll try and find one so a beautiful m35 uh, double decal helmet um, and another interesting piece here so this is an m42 helmet uh, it has a the rim here or we call it a beaded helmet so this rim actually what does it mean it means that this helmet wasn't suitable for combat use so they would uh, punch uh, a rim in it and it would be used for civil uh, civil wear um, this would be a typical luft shoots or air protection um, a helmet and these late war helmets they they didn't have a decal anymore on the front um, now the special thing about this helmet is actually inside um, it is made by the firm of uh, quest so the, with the letter q and interesting, of course, to see, uh, to know is that um, this manufacturer um, uh, didn't make a lot of M42 helmets, as um, I will show it. Maybe I have it in stock. 
Um, where is it? Over there. Oh, so this would be also a late war uh, helmet by Quist. And Quist was the only factory that made M40 helmets until 1943, maybe 1944 in the war. Um, now, these late war helmets already didn't have any decals anymore because um, it, it, uh, it, was, it was forbidden to place decals on the helmets after 1943. Um, and you, will, you can recognize these late war helmets by Quist because they also have the, the boat, the, the maker mark and the lot number um, on, the, on the rear of the helmet. So if you see this on an M40 helmet, uh, the maker mark and this, you actually can be sure it, it doesn't have any decals. If you see a decal, like an SS decal on a helmet, with with um, with the numbers under under each other instead of instead of on the side in here, um, you could already have red flags that it it, uh, it it the decals will probably not be original applied. The only exception is for police helmets. Police helmets always had double decals even in this configuration. So that brings me back to, of course, to this helmet. Um, so finding um, a, a Quest M42 helmet. It's very rare because they were only made uh, at the very end of the war and it's something that really is uh, desirable to have for collectors. Um, so a very nice uh, Luftschutz M42 uh, by Quest. This will be on the website very shortly. Um, I have some bread bags here but that's of course not super super interesting. Um, maybe here. So here we have, um, I've showed it in the previous video of La Glaise as well. This is a, a, a German sniper smock, perfect condition in Sumptan colors. It's, a, it's a, also a late war variant, so it doesn't have a face veal anymore. Um, it, it has a marking here, RBN number as well, but uh, not, uh, it's not really visible anymore. Uh, but just yeah, an honest, nice, a very light worn uh, smock. Yeah, beautiful example, we found at the show. Um, here we have, I will make some room here first. This is one of my favorite items I got at the show. So it's also a Luftwaffe jacket. We call this a, a four pocket tunic because of course it has four pockets on the front. But if you look at the details here, and especially how the, the, the pockets are made with this stitching seam on top of the, of the pocket here as well. And as, as well as we look at the, the type of cloth the type of lining, we can actually be sure that this uh, jacket was uh, probably made in, in Belgium or France because this is typical, uh, the typical type of, type of cloth and, uh, and details we see on, on foreign-made uh, uniforms. So a lot of Germans would actually um, be in, in a certain uh, village for a longer period of time and they would go to the local tailors there to make uh, a, a new uniform. Uh, because they had the need for it. And um, these uh, typical things I just pointed out um, are, are, are very similar to the, the tunics we see with the Belgian tags inside or French tags inside. So it's a foreign made jacket for a Luftwaffe um, Oberfeldwebel, so a, a non commissioned officer um, in very good condition. Um, if I have something to end with, of course I have. So here's a, a nice grouping from a, a Luftwaffe um, anti-aircraft um, soldier, uh, this eagle was on. and it's complete. Actually, it has the two documents here, um, like from the his Iron Cross uh, second class, so which is this uh, the medal here, uh, and uh, here is the document for his. Um, is an uh, anti-aircraft uh, badge or the, the flak Kampfabzeigen. Um, it's of course a super nice uh, example, maker marked by Junker, uh, which is one of the most desirable firms in, in, in badges because of the, the high details they produced. It's made in the Tombak, so a very qual quality ba badge, uh, complete with the matching document. And of course here, the Iron Cross as well. Um, some of these Iron Crosses have a maker mark and they would be maker marked on the, on the ring. This one doesn't have any maker mark, so uh, unfortunately for me, uh, but it's complete with, uh, with everything. So a nice grouping from one soldier, um, and I see there's some extra information already about him as well. So, yes. So that was a lot of uh, explaining a lot of things, but I hope you, you enjoyed uh, the details we pointed out on the, on the stuff we found. And um, 
yeah as i always say um at the end of the video don't forget to subscribe on our channel eh? like this more and more people can see the videos uh, and um, i also want to thank everybody um, who comes to me at the show and and tells me how good the videos are because for me it's it's uh, it's the feedback i need to make more of course and uh, it gives positive vibes to make more of these videos so so thank you for um, visiting me at the stalls saying hi and, and complimenting uh, the videos um, and we will be back of course with uh, more videos in the future thanks for watching